Hi, we're back for the second installment of Beginner Free Motion Machine Quilting. Now you remember in the last tutorial we went over kind of the nuts and bolts of supplies you need. Today we're actually going to start quilting. Now I'm a big proponent of learning to free motion quilt on small quilts, so if you don't have a small project to practice on, I'd make up a stack of 9 by 12 inch quilt sandwiches just like these. This size is large enough to get a sense of the quilting design, but small enough that you won't put any effort into wrestling with a large quilt. Now let's get to the sewing machine. I'm dropping my feed dogs, and I've got my free motion foot already mounted on my machine. Don't forget to lower your presser foot, and when you do, you'll notice that there will be some wiggle room between the bottom of the free motion foot and the quilt. We need that because we're going to be moving the quilt sandwich in all kinds of directions. And now we need to make some changes in our machine settings. I'm lowering my stitch length to zero because we're going to control stitch length by how fast we move the quilt and how fast we run the foot pedal. This is my personal preference, but I'm also activating the needle down option on my machine because by always stopping in the needle down position, I can easily keep my place in the quilted design. Now, as you can see, I've got my gloves on. I'm ready to go. Let's quilt. I am spraying sewing grade silicone spray on my plexiglass table here, and this will make my table surface more slippery, so moving the quilt around will be much easier for me. I just wipe it off with a paper towel and my surface is nice and slick. Because I'm using only sewing grade silicone spray, I don't have to worry about any staining of my fabrics. Since virtually all your stitching will be visible when you free motion quilt, it's really important to be very neat. To begin stitching, lower your needle while gently pulling on the thread tail with your left hand. Because you are gently tugging on that top thread tail, you'll see that it is now pulling up the bobbin thread as the needle comes up. Catch the loop of bobbin thread with a pin or a scissor tip and pull it all the way up. By doing this, you can avoid developing a blob of tangled thread on the back side of the quilt and your work will be very neat. To begin a line of stitching, take four to five very small stitches right next to where the thread comes up and these will be your locking stitches. Once you're done quilting, you may either snip these off or carry them to the back side, tie a knot, and then bury them in the batting layer. We are now ready for takeoff. Now expect that you're going to feel a little bit overwhelmed with all the freedom here, and it's really going to take you some time and some practice to really perfect and get down some good free motion machine quilting skills. But the most important thing you can do here is to relax. Now I know that's a lot easier said than done, but tensing up while you're doing free motion quilting will really work against you. So do what you have to do. Put on some mellow music or maybe even drink a glass of wine before you go to free motion quilt. But know that this is really a time to relax. This is called the stippling stitch and it is created by stitching a series of random curves that meander around one another. The goal here is never to cross a line, and that can be somewhat of a challenge when you're first starting out. Now honestly, this really is not a beginner free motion design, so rather than focusing on how to create this design, I want you to focus on a couple of other things. As I work, I am completely focused on the area just in front of and to the sides of that needle, and I cannot take my eyes off that area or I risk losing control of my stitching line. Also notice my hand positions. Your hands need to be close enough to the needle to have good control of the quilt sandwich, but not so close that you risk stitching into a finger. The longer I stitch, the further my hands become from the needle, and as this happens, I feel myself losing control of the stitching line. To alter your hand position, stop stitching first, and then adjust your hands into a better spot before you begin stitching again. Notice also that I am moving my quilt sandwich with a very light touch. If you can learn to control that quilt with a light touch, you will avoid the muscle fatigue and soreness in the upper arms and neck that you hear people complain about. 
Another maneuver that helps with this is using the silicone spray I demonstrated at the beginning of this segment because a nice slippery surface will require less effort on your behalf to move the quilt. When you want to end a line of stitching, you'll repeat just what you learned to begin a line of stitching. Take four to six very tiny stitches next to one another, and these are your locking stitches. You may now snip this off close to the quilt top or cut a long thread tail that can be carried to the back side, knotted, and then buried in the batting layer. Now let's look at a few other designs. This is the loop-de-loop -loop design, and it is created by deliberately crossing stitching lines to form loops. These loops are of different sizes, and some are more circular, while others are more ovoid. I'm also working to disguise my travel line between the loops, and I'm mainly doing this by taking some nice sweeping curves. Know that as I stitch, I am in complete control of my stitch length. The machine really has no say in this. When you are first learning to free motion quilt, expect that your stitch length will likely be very inconsistent and you will have some stitches that are unusually long and others that are quite short. This is all determined by how fast you move the quilt sandwich beneath you and how fast you run that foot pedal. This is a coordinated dance between you and your machine, but with practice, you'll be doing the rumba together in the future. Just keep practicing. Now the loop-de-loop -loop design is a really fun design, but it's also very versatile because it's very easy to come up with a lot of spin-off designs or cousins of the original design. Let's look at a couple of spin-off designs. To stitch a loop-de-loop -loop hearts design, we begin by stitching the loop-de-loop -loop design, and when we feel we've got a spot with enough room for a heart, we stitch a short line that's fairly straight, then stitch one hump of the heart, then come up from the base of the heart and stitch the opposite side. When we exit that heart, we again stitch out loop-de-loop -loop until we're ready for another heart, and we'll again stitch one side and then the opposite side of the heart. Now I aim for a heart that is slightly asymmetric and I try to vary the sizes of my hearts and also the orientation of my hearts. That way they don't all point in the same direction. Know that this is a great design to use on kids quilts. And to stitch a loop-de-loop -loop flowers design, we again start with the basic loop-de-loop -loop travel line, and once we're in a spot to stitch a flower, we stitch our first petal, then stitch a series of petals that come off a center point. Notice that not all petals are the same size, and that's okay. Now we can exit this flower between any two petals we choose, and then we begin another line of loop-de-loop. -loop. We'll stitch the next flower in exactly the same fashion by stitching a series of petals around a central point. And we'll just continue on and on until we've filled the available space. Now if you've been thinking about this as we're going along, you're probably realizing that you could take literally any continuous line design motif and plug it into that loop-de-loop -loop design and you could come up with one after another of design ideas for the loop-de-loop -loop family. Well, you should also know that this particular family is only one of about a bazillion families of designs that you can quilt. So there's just all kinds of fun out there waiting for you to discover it. So take what you've learned today and get to your machines and start practicing, and then you can get in on the fun too. So long. <laughs>